So let's talk about web technologies. And you are very aware that there are several technologies available out there for you to develop your web application. But nevertheless, what's, what's the technology you choose? Your app's gonna be always a client server app. Uh, in this case, the client is always the web browser. And working in a high environment, the web server for our applications are always the SAP HANA servers through one layer called Access Engine that we're gonna discuss a little bit more later. So whatever is the technology you choose for developing a web app, there are three core languages that are considered the backbone of every web application. The first one is the HTML, responsible for the structure of a page. The second one is the CSS language, responsible for the design and organize the elements and how everything is demonstrated to the end user. And the last language is the JavaScript, responsible for the page behavior. So let's start with the hypertext markup language, in short, HTML. Is this language is responsible for all the content that's gonna be presented in a web page. It's the markup language for every web page, so every web page you access, there is an HTML behind. It's readable to the end user, very easy to understand what is in the code conveys the document structure. So everything that belongs to a document is in the HTML and also present links to other pages and files. The markup in the name of the language stands for how it works using marks or HTML tags to set each element in an HTML document. For example, we use the tag P to specify that the content between those tags is a paragraph or strong to emphasize and other tags like table, button, h1 for header, and so on. So let's see a quick example of an HTML. So I'm here on my text editor, and I'm gonna create this new file where I'm gonna save it as a sample HTML. So let me just put it right here. Let's call this tests.html, and let's write a very simple HTML document. So we start with the markups HTML and in between them we created that head for the header of my HTML and also the tag body. And let's make a content here on my head like the title of my web page. Let's call this is my first HTML and the body, you won't see me typing everything. I'll just paste it, what I have it right here. And here I have one division of my HTML, one section that we're gonna have a button that's with the label BTN1. This button has an ID, as you can see right here. And also I have other marks like H1 for header one, paragraph, and h2. So let's save this document and open it and see how it, it will work. If we check right here, it got me on the, on the web browser. You can see right here, I have this running locally, of course, but there you go, my button, my h1, the paragraph, and the h2. So here we have the structure of the HTML, very straightforward, very easy to understand. Second part, we're gonna see the CSS. The CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Uh, this is the language responsible for the presentation of a markup document, a presentation of an HTML. So whether the, in, in, while the, the HTML is responsible for all the structure, all the content of the document, the CSS will control how that content content is presented. So it's basically a collection of form formatting rules. Uh, it could be placed inside one HTML or in a separate file, is most, most commonly in a separate file only for the CSS. And you can have multiple CSS, multiple cascading style sheets for a single HTML document. Uh, you can apply this CSS for one specific page or for an entire website. Here are some examples of how can we, can we do that. For example, you have one, H, one unique HTML page and you want to, this page presented in different ways. So 
when you have users users running your application on the desktop, for example, you want to present everything that can fit into a larger screen. While when you when a user wants to print the content from one of your application forms, one of uh, one of your application screens, it wants only the relevant content. These users won't have in its paper all of the menus, all of the options for interaction. Then the same thing for the mobile CSS, for example, you could have one cascading style sheet optimizing the presentation of your application for mobile devices, only showing what is relevant and every all the content, uh, preparing the content to fit on a smaller screen. We won't be doing any CSS on this, uh, on this e-learning, but I can show you one quick example of how the CSS is important. For example, we can go right here to the website of sap.com, for example, and this, of course, as I mentioned in the beginning, it it's a, a set of uh, HTMLs with uh, JavaScript for the behavior we're going to see a little bit further. And of course, the CSS, there is an option here on this web browser where I can simply turn it off my page style. So this is using the regular cascade style sheet from this website, sap.com, but I will su switch it off. So we will ignore the style. And we will see how important is the CSS for the presentation of a web page. So here I have the same structure, the same content, the same menus, uh, all the all the, the the articles, blogs, and and documents are the same. But since I don't have the CSS to organize everything, I cannot I cannot have a good user experience, of course. So that's the importance of the CSS. JavaScript is the programming language of the web. And although it was invented for the web, we've seen JavaScript applications running also on desktop game consoles and other platforms as well. It's a high level language, uh, dynamic and loosely typed. There's no types in, in, in JavaScript. It supports object uh, orientation, of course, but you can also create your application based on functions. So you can have a mix between programming object-oriented uh, with uh, function and event-based application. It's not Java. Uh, there's nothing to do in, uh, with Java. And it's responsible for the page behavior. So when you want to manipulate actions, listen to events, hide and show elements, several things that you can do uh, with JavaScript. It's important to mention that the content of the JavaScript is always parsed as soon as it reaches the browser. For that reason, it's important to have this code placed in the bottom of the HTML. That is important to avoid your HTML page to be loading in scenarios where you have a very heavy JavaScript, for example, and you place that in the top of your HTML document. There's nothing that's going to be presented to the end user while the JavaScript have not loaded 100%. So if you place that in the bottom, the user can see the HTML, the CSS, all the structure, and everything that is presented to him while the browser is loading the JavaScript in the bottom. So let's go for a quick example of how to use JavaScript. And to this, I'm going to use a space that previous HTML document we developed in the first exercise. So I'm going to open this with my editor as well and create a new file. Uh, let's save this, this new file as a JavaScript file. and. So here on the folder where my HTML is located, I'm going to create a new folder called JS. And inside this JS folder, I'm going to place this new file called sample, sample.javascript. So I have here my sample.javascript. And of course, you won't see me typing all the code. But here I pasted uh, just a quick example of how can we change the structure of an HTML. So in the first lines, we are creating new elements, so a new H1 and a new P a new header one and a new paragraph. Uh, and then we're going to add some content in those uh, in those new marks. Uh, and at the end, we're going to add those new marks to the previous HTML. So to the original HTML, uh, we're going to add these new elements. Uh, of course, we need to make one small change on the original HTML document. First thing is, uh, if you notice, we are adding the new elements into one specific uh, element with an ID JS div. So that's why we're going to do here, JS div. Let me just confirm the name. Yeah, that's correct. So the last thing, let me close this right here. And the last thing is also add the reference between the HTML and the JavaScript. And to do that, we only use a simple line of code 
that is right here. So basically, we use the tag script and we reference the script as a, uh, in the attribute source. Uh, the source, of course, is the same path as my new sample.js. So uh, inside a folder called JS, I have my file over there. So let's just save this and save also the JavaScript and let's run it from the browser. Just click right here and you can see we have the new HTML now with the new header one and the new paragraph added. Uh, since all this code is being parsed and executed by the client, by the web browser, we can debug and uh, go step by step in the execution of this application. So I would just open the debugger from my web browser. I'm going to refresh this right here and you're going to see that we have here the sample.js that is being referenced by the test.html and I'm going to place a breakpoint right here in the first line. So let me just refresh it. Okay, so the browser loads the HTML with all the structure of the HTML. And now, uh, since my JavaScript reference is placed in the bottom of the page, it is loading now the content of the JavaScript file. So we're going to pass here by, the, by the, the part that we create the new elements. So we create them both, the new heading and the, and the new paragraph. Uh, we're going to also add contents to this a new elements and on the last line we are on the last two lines we're going to add this into the js div element so let's just go for the first one there we go and the second one will be there that concludes our unit thank you for your time